Let's look at how you call out weld symbols on a drawing. And this big glop here is uh, it's like a map of the symbol from AWS explaining every possib possible stuff you could have on your drawing. You usually don't use all of this, but um, if you want to find out what goes where, you could refer to this. I never do, but you could. Um, when you put a symbol on your drawing saying put a weld here, you start out with a basic leader and a horizontal line uh, an inch long or more. So there's the start of your symbol. And you point at the joint. Uh, I'm afraid that this is out of a book where they were trying to illustrate what the weld looks like. So here's them pointing at a fillet weld. Sorry about that. When you do a drawing, you never draw the weld. You just draw the two pieces of metal before they were welded, and you point at the joint with your arrow. Then you add the symbol. This triangular symbol means fillet weld, and you notice that the symbol is similar to the shape of the weld material. So there's the symbol for the weld. And the vertical edge always goes to the left, no matter what. No matter what direction the arrow is pointing, up or down, which side. Vertical edge always goes to the left. If you want them to weld the, the joint that you are actually pointing at, then you put the symbol under the line, and that means weld on the arrow side. Arrow side is the side you are pointing to. In some situations, you can point to a side, but you really want them to weld on the other side. And so in a case like that, you put the symbol above the line, and that means weld on the other side. So here, symbol below means arrow side. Here, symbol above, means other side. Arrow side, other side. You can also tell them to weld both sides by putting a symbol above and below the line. And here in the bottom examples you can see how the arrow could come in from the right or from the left. It could come from above or from below, but no matter what that vertical edge of the symbol always goes on the left. Now you add the size of the weld and if you need to the length of the weld. You don't always need that. You do always need the size and the size always goes to the left of the symbol no matter what. So vertical edge to the left, size to the left. If the weld is a quarter of an inch um, across the base of the triangle, you put a quarter inch. You can also put 0.250. Either one is acceptable, fractions or decimals. The, the weld size is not the size across the sloping thing or the distance across the throat. It's just how big is that leg of the triangle the horizontal leg or the vertical leg. That's the weld size. If you want them to weld on both sides, you must put the weld size on both sides. So if this were a quarter inch weld, you'd write a quarter fillet weld below and a quarter fillet weld above. If you need to tell them about length, the length goes on the right side of the symbol. So this one means make a weld four inches long. This one means make a weld six inches long. Weld length. Often, especially with fillet welds, they will do a thing called an intermittent weld, which many people call a stitch weld. And this is where they run a bead and then they lift up and leave a space. Then they run another bead and lift up and leave a space. 
That's an intermittent weld. And the way you call out the weld, let's look at the picture here on the right side of this slide. Uh, length dash pitch. So in this weld symbol that we see, this is a 3 eighths weld. So the, the distance across the base of the triangle of the fillet weld is 3 eighths. Then the length of each stitch is 6 inches. So looking at the isometric view, you can see each stitch is 6 inches long. Then there's a gap, but we don't give them a number related to that. We give them instead the pitch. How far is it from the center of one weld to the center of the next weld? That's the pitch. So this symbol here, 6-10, means make stitches 6 inches long every so often and space them 10 inches apart center to center. Here is AWS giving us some examples of stitch welds or intermittent welds. The one on the top shows welding on the far side. So notice the symbol is up above the line. They didn't put the size in here. They're just talking about the stitches right here. Um, and these stitches are two inches long and six inches apart on center. In the middle picture, these intermittent welds are spaced the same on both sides of the part. So here's a symbol that says weld arrow side and far side and the same weld length and pitch above and below. Sometimes you want them to stagger the welds, especially if uh, you want to avoid um, warping from heat, you might want them to stagger. So that's what you see pictured. And in the symbol, that is represented by staggering or offsetting the two symbols. And I believe it does not matter which one sticks out farther and which one is sl slid to the right. I'm not sure about that. I think it doesn't matter. Um, and so this one says these stitches, these welds, are three inches long and they're spaced ten inches on center and they're staggered. Then if you need to say other things, you can make a tail <coughs> with a 45 degree angle on each leg of the tail and it's the same size as the fillet symbol. And you can put whatever you have to say here. Oftentimes they will put what type of electrode, what type of stick or wire should you use. When we did our handrail drawing, you put how many welds were there in here. I think you put 17 times in here. If you don't have anything extra to say, then you don't need a tail. Here are the sizes. This is from AWS and I gave you these in a handout. So the triangle, the fillet weld symbol, is 0.2 high when printed and the tail is 0.2 wide when printed and both of these use 45 degree angles. I'm sorry they use leading zeros. This is not an ASME standard obviously. Here are some examples <coughs> out of the AWS manual illustrating if you have such and such a situation, how do you write that? Um, here's an interesting one. Half inch weld on the arrow side, so underneath the line. Quarter inch weld on the far side, so above the line. Now just uh, a couple of kinds of design guidelines. Normally you will either, when you're trying to figure out how big to make your weld, you will either ask your supervisor or you might refer to some existing drawings in your company and see what they did in other similar places. But as a starting point, if you don't have those available to you, this is the basic idea. 
If you are only welding on one side, make the weld size the thickness of the thinnest plate. So if you've got a quarter inch plate and a half inch plate, your weld size will be a quarter inch. That's the thinnest plate. If you're welding on both sides of a joint, it makes sense that you don't need as much weld material. And so the guideline there is if you're welding both sides, you can make the weld three quarters the thickness of the thinnest material. So if you have a quarter inch welded to a half inch and you're welding both sides, three quarters of a quarter is three sixteenths. You could punch that into your calculator to figure it out. So in this drawing, if this were a quarter inch plate, the weld size would be three sixteenths, three sixteenths, or 0 .188, 0 0188. Then as a general practice, the length of a weld or the length of a stitch should be at least four times the weld size. So if you're using a quarter inch weld, this should be at least one inch long. And notice the wrap at the end. Um, shops usually have um, weld guidelines that tell them to do that, but uh, just in case anybody wonders, the length of the wrap around a corner, and this, this weld wrap is to prevent cracking, so that should be at least two times the weld size. So if you have a quarter inch weld, that should be a half inch long. I wanted to show you the handout that I have given you. It's a PDF here, and it has this AWS roadmap followed by a, a listing of each of the weld types and their symbols and some um, additional symbols at the bottom like the all around and some uh, finish symbols. And then on the second page of this handout, are the weld sizes from AWS so that you know how to make your symbols.